Take your thumb, give it a roll. Boom, look at that. This is fun. You wonder why grandmothers don't want the guys around the house. They sit around doing this all day. Carmelo, how do you say it in Sicily? Gabriel! So, today we're going to cook some good Pugliese Italian food. Classic, right? The heel of the boot of Italy. This is where what is known as piatte povere, the food of the poor, has become the food we love the most. We're going to make homemade cavatelli, and here's two dishes I started. There's with the board, and there's without, with arugula sauce. So this is a great thing to make when you buy arugula and you don't eat it all. I bought this arugula Saturday at Migliorelli's in Rhinebeck, so it's local arugula. And you know, it's been in a plastic bag, we ate two or three salads, but by now it's starting to get a little wilty. It's obviously not gone, it's just a little wilty. So what we're going to do is I'm going to show you how to cook it in a very simple way that the peasants do with the arugula. So the first thing we're going to make is homemade cavatelli. So come around here, Jean-Luc. We're going to use uh, AP flour and semolina flour. If you don't have semolina flour, it's okay. If you can get Don Lewis's Wild Hive semolina flour, it's local, go for it. I got Bob's Red Mill, it's great. I got it right at Sunflower. So look, I have a cup of semolina flour, and you see it's a little granular and coarse. And then I need to grab a spoon. I'm gonna put about a little more than half as much of all-purpose flour, probably about three quarters of a cup, okay? In my food processor, with a nice pinch of salt, pop on the lid, and we're going to spin it, and I'm going to add about a half a cup of water, but we're going to test it, so to see if it's too dry or too wet. Let it go. What's going to happen is it's going to make a little ball in your machine. Let's see it's struggling a bit. I'm going to add a drop more water right now with the machine. A little more, like a tablespoon. And you should get, there you go, start getting that ball. That's when you know your dough has come together. Look at that. Beautiful. All right. Great. Let's move to my cutting board. It's always good to have a wood cutting board for this. This, I have some fancy kick-ass like, handmade artisanal cutting boards. This is literally just pine. This is my pizza and pasta board. All right, so look, my dough's a little wet, so I'm going to spread some flour on the board, and we're going to put this dough down here. Now, flour on my hands, and I'm going to work this dough. Take my hands, I'm going to squish it and press it. You need to knead the dough pretty well, but you don't have to go crazy. But the way I learned to do this in Italy is press it, fold it, turn it, press it, fold it, turn it, press it, fold it. If it starts to stick, give it a scrape. This is your best friend when working on a wooden board. Press it, press it, press it. Fold it, turn it, press it, fold it. So you're going to do this for about four or five minutes until the dough gets nice and spongy. And I'm going to show you so we don't spend four or five minutes watching me knead dough. because This is this can go a little longer. I'm going to put this under a towel. We'll come back to that one. I made one uh, about an hour ago because it's always best for the dough to rest. I wrapped it in plastic wrap because that's a peasant tradition, right? and uh, wrapped it in plastic wrap, and I put it in the refrigerator. So this dough, look, the secret to the dough is you push it and it kind of springs back a little bit after you push it, then you know you've developed some gluten. See how it's moving still? That's what you want. So to make cavatelli, there are, it's really fun, and kids can help with this. Now, we're gonna roll out a snake. Let me clean some of this off my hands. You don't want a lot of flour on your board for this because one of the great things about wood is it's a natural gripping action that's going to hold this. If you have too much flour, it slides because you want to make the snake. This is the snake. Roll it out, roll it out, and you're actually additionally kneading it when you do this. So see what I have? I have the snake. Is it perfect? Eh, good enough, right? It looks good. Now, let's take our dough cutter and cut these. Eh, a little more than a quarter inch, less than a half an inch. The ones in the middle are a little bigger because that's my artistic signature. I hope you like it. 
So now what we're going to do, we're going to do the first ones we're going to do on a board. This you can buy online or you can probably buy it at, uh, you might even have them upstairs at Woodstock Hardware or one of the other better, I know Rhinebeck um, Warren Cutlery has them. It's a Cavatelli and Yonke board. Put it down like that, like a little pill. Take your thumb, give it a roll. Boom, look at that. This is fun. You wonder why grandmothers don't want the guys around the house. They sit around doing this all day and boom, and boom. And you can actually make these pretty quick. See, the act, it's really difficult to do this with gloves because your thumbprint and the grain of the wood both help grip and pull the pasta. So these are like little, almost like dumplings, right? So this is how you do it if you have the board. Now, if you want to do this today and you don't have the board, let me show you a trick. First, I'm going to take some of this with a little bit of flour so they don't stick like that, see? Put them on here. Drop them in with the one ones. I made those the first batch, eh, maybe an hour ago. Okay, now let's make another snake. Okay? And look at how pretty the dough is. The semolina is so beautiful to work with. We're not going to make this anymore. So let's get some of our flour out of the way. How y'all doing in there? Good? You having fun? Am I putting you to sleep? Watch this. We're going to make a snake. Roll the dough. So much fun. And you want to roll it a little bit more. Okay, and we do the same thing. I'm going to cut this same size. Bada bing, bada boom. Italian food is so much fun because it's it's primitive in a beautiful way, right? So now, if you don't have a roller with the grooves, the grooves, as you see, are designed to hold the sauce. We're going to make these with grooves on the inside. It sounds like a, a song, right? So look, I'm going to take a serrated steak knife, come down here, press it down, and just pull the pasta to me. Now I have cavatelli that's smooth, but on the inside has a little groove, so that'll also help hold the sauce. So no worries if you don't have a paddle, you can simply do this and make beautiful cavatelli quickly, easily, three ingredients again, but piatti povere, the food of the poor, is some of the healthiest and most vital food we have. And this pasta, again, requires no eggs. You're getting your protein from kneading the semolina and the wheat flour, because if you're really poor and you have eggs and you have flour, that's two meals, not one, right? You want to get your two meals out of it. One day is a frittata, well, whatever weeds are growing in your yard, the next day is pasta. So you have to make do with what you have. You make beautiful pasta. You want to be a luxurious, wealthy, gourmet chef, you make this pasta as well. So anyway, let's scoop these up, put them here. We're going to drop these in water in a minute. But before we do that, we're going to get to the next step. 